I thought I'd just pick out three key slides and uh, and focus on those. First one uh, that hopefully you can see up there now is just just a, a real clarity for us around what we've done over the last or what we're looking to do uh, in the years ahead. But we've really um, consolidated our view in terms of purpose, in terms of you know why we do what we do, um, you know what we do as an organisation, uh, and then having absolute clear focus on on the three pillars. Uh, and those three pillars for us are, as you can see there, owning that performance technology stack uh, in elite sport. Uh, that's our heritage, that's our core, um, and I'll talk through some of the execution of how we're going there. Um, and fundamentally, um, as we deliver on that, it really enables us to play in pillar two and pillar three. Uh, the second one there being leveraging that presence that we have in elite sport into the prosumer market. We've made some really, really good progress over the last uh, 12 months in that space. Uh, and also data commercialisation, our third pillar there. Um, in doing what we do in elite sport, uh, we've had a hypothesis that we can start to commercialise our data uh, that we have, and we had some, a couple of really significant wins during uh, FY17. Um, each of those pillars um, stand alone, uh, terrific revenue opportunities, and I'll talk to uh, the elite one in particular uh, on the third slide I'll go through today. Um, but, you know, stand alone, they're great opportunities, but just once again, fundamentally, we need to nail that first pillar uh, and that really brings Pillar 2 and Pillar 3 into, uh, into play for us. Um, in terms of FY17 achievements, massive transformational year for the business. You know, we made uh, three significant um, acquisitions uh, in Player Tech, uh, Exos, uh, and also our AMS, uh, which was uh, in August uh, uh, last month. Um, despite all of that, uh, that integration, all that focus on those acquisitions, we still had terrific core revenue growth. And the Elite Wearables business grew by 52% year on year. And really importantly, uh, we continue to see that shift uh, from capital to subscription. And, and that's where we're focused on building a really strong recurring revenue business. Um, so we're really thrilled with the results in the, in the wearables business. Um, Exos, um, you know, despite that only being acquired in August of last year and a lot of integrations don't go particularly well, um, I think the team have done a fantastic job of not only bringing that business into the Catapult group, um, but also taking on a pro forma basis the revenue growth from over 3% 3, from 3 a year ago um, to up over 10% year on year. So Matt Bayros and the team uh, and also the, uh, the Catapult team uh, around the globe, I think, have done a great job of bringing that business into the fold, but continuing to focus on the uh, on the growth there. Um, our first year of underlying EBITDA, um, our positive underlying EBITDA, that was a, a terrific achievement for us. We said that we would uh, deliver that uh, in November of last year, uh, and we've uh, we've done that uh, once again with uh, high growth, a number of acquisitions. So we're really thrilled with the result there, um, and just those three acquisitions. You know, I've touched on the Exos. Um, uh, digital acquisition. Player tech is really important for us. For those that don't know, that's our foray into the prosumer market. Uh, we tested that with GP Sports and US high schools back in FY16. Uh, and then we acquired the player tech business, which we see as a, a sandbox for us. It's based in, in Ireland. It's got really good tech, some really good dev, uh, dev capability, a lower cost of goods than what we had. Uh, and we've retooled that offering and relaunched it in April. So once again, really testing and learning and understanding that prosumer market more and more. Uh, and then we expect to see a full-blown launch of our Catapult prosumer offering in FY18. Um, and also at the same time, uh, we've been able to really lift the uh, the volume growth that we've seen out of player tech. In Q4, we did about 1.8x in volume uh, what that business had done in Q1 to uh, to Q3. Uh, and once again, the integration there has gone you know, really, really well for us. Point five there is just the data commercialisation model. Um, you know, we've had a hypothesis that with our clear sky technology in stadium, in game, um, that there was the ability to utilise that with, uh, with broadcasters. Uh, and for those that saw the State of Origin this year, or if you use the AFL app, you'll start to see that our data is being used in game. Uh, for the first time. And that's really important for us in terms of league-wide deals uh, and really important for us in terms of um, our future ability to monetise uh, that in-game data that, uh, that we have. Um, so that was a, a, a terrific achievement during the year. Point six there is just around R&D, a lot of product enhancements. Um, you'll see in the deck that we do make a significant investment in R&D, we'll continue to, um, and that's really important, be it on the software side and also be it on the firmware and hardware side. We've had some really good wins during the year there. Um, and ProSumer, as I said, we've laid down the foundations there um, and we're learning more and we've got a team building out the full offering from uh, the actual device itself, packaging, um, obviously the 3PL, logistics, 
uh, and the uh, the e-commerce that goes uh, goes with that. So, um, and we're absolutely committed to launching that in FY18. And then just organisational excellence. As I said, it's been a transformational year. Uh, we've got over 300 people around the globe these days. Um, so we're really focused on 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 our, all of our people understanding clearly what our purpose uh, purpose is as an organisation, um, how we do that through our values, and then making sure that I build out and utilise the right capability around the around the globe. Given we now have hubs in Chicago, in Boston. Um, in Dundalk, in Ireland, uh, in London, Leeds and Melbourne. So uh, we have uh, got some terrific scale and we're determined to, uh, to leverage that. Last slide uh, for me is just on slide 15 there, which is a really important one for the first time. One of the pieces of work that I kicked off and I started a couple of months ago was to get a true understanding of the market sizing. I think we had a, a good understanding of it, but we've done a real deep dive on the data to understand what is that addressable market. And we've got a real high conviction on about 10,000 um, elite teams around the globe. And then the way that we've tried to present this is now that we do have that full technology stack um, of wearables, of video and AMS, um, just to give a, a sense of what that market size is uh, globally for those 10,000 teams. There's also another 10,000 elite teams that sit below that um, that I haven't included here uh, that we think are also an addressable market. Um, but clearly we're going after those 10,000 teams. Um, you know, there's 1,500 that we have so far. Um, and we believe that we are building out the technology stack. We've got the individual products there, building that technology stack out, investing in tactical analytics around it to make sure that we can take advantage of somewhere between a $450 to $550 million addressable market, which, which we think is, uh, is a very conservative um, uh, estimate. Also, you can see there on the far right just the future revenue growth we've got there through data monetization, which I spoke to earlier, the analytics add-ons that we continue to, uh, to build out, um, tactical analytics, and then other... I guess, uh, other, other potential opportunities within the uh, sports tech um, ecosystem. 